This is our pre-algebra lesson about comparing expressions. We're going to be comparing using these three symbols, the so less than, greater than, or equal to. And when we have two expressions like this, to compare them effectively, what we need to do is solve both sides, and then we can place the appropriate symbol. Just a quick review on what those symbols represent. This symbol here, less than, called the less than symbol. And the other one, the greater than symbol, essentially what they do is they point to the smaller number. Where this is the smaller end and this is the larger end. So if you have two numbers, like 3 and 5, you would put the appropriate symbol in here that shows that this is the larger and this is the smaller. So the appropriate symbol in this case would be the less than sign. And we would read this as 3 is less than 5. Another way people sometimes remember this is they think of it as like a, a big fish or something. Here's our fish. All right. And when the side that's open will always go to the larger number, like the fish is really hungry and wants to eat the bigger number all the time. So if you, that helps to, you know, when you're thinking about it, that's great. We're going to go ahead and look at solving both sides of this inequality and then placing the correct symbol in here. On the left, you'll see it says 3 times 2 plus 4. So the first step in solving, we'll solve both sides at the same time, I think. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4. And on the left, or on the right over here, we've done 3 divi 12 divided by 3 is 4. And we'll do 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 minus 2 is 2. And now we're going to be able to replace this symbol in here that shows that 10 is greater than 2. So we use the greater than sign. Again, it looks like a little open fish mouth or something going towards the larger number. Or the point is smaller than the opening, whichever way helps you to remember that. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. This time we have the same numbers, 5, 2, 7, 5, 2, 7. We're just showing that grouping symbols can change the value that we'll have here. So in this, on this side, the left, we would first multiply 5 times 2. On the right, our first step would be to add 2 plus 7 is 9. So 5 times 2 is 10. 2 plus 7 is 9. And then in the final step, 5 times 9 is 45. 10 plus 7 is 17. So there we have our final answers to each of these expressions. We're going to place the correct symbol in there that shows that 45 is greater than 17. The way we would read this is 17 is less than 45. And again, the, the larger opening goes towards the larger number. Now we have a couple of more complicated expressions here. With this first expression on the left, we're going to solve what's inside the parentheses here first. And then we're going to do the division at the end. With our expression on the right, we're going to first solve inside the parentheses, and using order of operations, we will first multiply 2 times 2. You'll see that in there. 2 times 2 is 4. Everything else remains the same. 24 minus 4 is 20. Everything else remains the same. In our next step, we solve what's inside the parentheses for both sides. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. 20 divided by 5. Our final solution will be 4 on this side. 1 plus 6 is 7. So our final answer then, answers then are 4 and 7. And the symbol that we will use is that 4 is less than 7. All right. So again, we're just looking at expressions, solving them all the way down until they're a single digit or a double digit, just a number. And then we're able to compare those numbers. So we could, in essence, put this less than symbol all the way at the top after we know what the solution is. See? But for us, it's, it's nice to just solve it all the way down. All right, let's look at this one. We have in this one grouping symbols. So we're going to have to start on the inside, 8 plus 2. Over here, we've started inside our grouping symbols as well, 6 plus 4. So both of them ended up in 10. All right, now we're going to go inside our grouping symbols again. 4 times 10 would be 40 for the next step. And over here, we have 10 times 7 as our first step, giving us 70. You know, 2 times 4 is 80. And here we've done our multiplication first. 5 times 2 is 10. 
and then we're going to leave our subtraction till the end. So we have 80 and 60. Which symbol would we use? Less than, greater than, or equal to inside that place? Right, we're going to use the greater than symbol because 80 is definitely greater than 60. And so again, the opening goes towards the larger number. Our final question that we're going to look at um, as far as solving expressions is when you've got fractions. When you have fractions, you remember we do the top and the bottom completely solve first, and then we worry about the fraction at the end. So it's just like we've got this expression here, 7 times 6 divided by 2 plus 1, and we're going to solve that expression. Same with this one, 60 divided by 20 times 3. 60 divided by 20 is 3, and 2 plus 1 is 3. In this step, 7 times 6 is 42, 3 times 3 is 9, and then in the final step here we'll do 42 divided by 3 is 14 over 7, and here we have 9 over 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we're going to solve 14 divided by 7 is 2, and now we can put in the correct symbol, less than, greater than, or equal to, and in this case it will read 2 is less than 3. So that's how we would solve this. Again, you solve the expressions on the left and on the right separately, or at the same time the way I was doing it one step each. Um, and when you get to the end, you'll be able to compare the values. And the next part is called an open sentence. An open sentence is where you have an equation like this. 15 is equal to x plus 5. And you're given different values, a, b, c, or d, 8, 9, 10, 11. And what we need to do is use substitution to find the correct answer. So we're going to take each value and plug it into the equation and find out what's the correct solution. So let's start out. 15 is equal to 8 plus 5. 15 is equal to 13. Well, that's not true, so we know that a is not the correct answer. We'll try again. 15 is equal to 9 plus 5. 15 is equal to 14. That's also not true, so 9 is not the correct answer. Let's go down here. 15 is equal to 10 plus 5. That's starting to look a little bit better. 15 equals 15. That one is correct. So our solution is C. We can check the final answer if we'd like. 15 is equal to 11 plus 5. 15 is equal to 16. No, that's not true. So we can also cancel that one out just to check and make sure that our work was correct. So with open sentences, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take each of the solutions and put it into that equation and find the one that is correct. Let's look at another question of that. 5 plus 4g equals 17. We're going to solve for the variable of g. In each case, we're solving for the variable inside of the equation or inequality. So we'll plug in that value and see what happens. 5 plus 4g, g being 1 this time, is equal to 17. 5 plus 4 times 1 is 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 is definitely not equal to 17. All right. So again, all we did was plug the value of 1 into the equation when we saw the, the letter g. I'm going to move this off to the side and work on my next question because I know that one's not right. 5 plus 4 times 2 is equal to 17. And that value came from here. We just plugged that 2 right into the equation. 5 plus 4 times 2 is 8. Well, 17, 5, and 8 is definitely 13. So that is not true, and B is not the correct answer. So the next step I'm going to try is 3. I'm going to take the value of 3 and plug it into that equation. Let's move all of this out of the way for a second. Bring that over to the side. All right, 5 plus 4 times 3 is 17. 5 plus 12 is 17. 17 is equal to 17. 
And so that is the correct answer. We could check D as well, but we don't need to. We found our correct solution, so we're done. All right. And so that would be the correct solution to this equation. All right, let's look at one more question. This one here has two variables in the solution. So we have an x and a y. And so each case, we're going to be given an x value and a y value that we have to put into that equation. Let's go ahead and take a look. y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 4. So in my first option here, I have 5 is y is equal or greater than or equal to 2x, which is 2, 2 times 2, plus 4. So 5 is greater than or equal to 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4. 5 is greater than or equal to 8. That's not true. 5 is not greater than 8. 5 is less than 8. So that one is not a correct solution. And this is the way that we'll test this type of work. Let's continue. Um, our options for B x equals 3 and y equals 6. So 6 is greater than or equal to 2 times 3 plus 4. So let's go ahead and, and solve that. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4. 6 is greater than or equal to 10. No, 10 is greater than 6. So that is also not true. All right, let's get rid of that. And go on to option C. X is equal to 2. Y is equal to 9. 9 is greater than or equal to 2 times 2 plus 4. And we're going to go ahead and solve that. So 9 is greater than or equal to 4 plus 4. 9 is greater than or equal to 8. Yes, 9 is greater than 8, so that one is true. And again, with one correct solution, we can stop at that point. If we'd like to check the other answers, we absolutely can. For some reason, all of my solutions have been C today. All right, let's take a look at this one. 8 is greater than or equal to 2 times 4 plus 4. 8 is greater than or equal to 8 plus 4. And that's definitely not going to work out. 8 is not greater than 12. That is wrong. All right. 8 is definitely less than 12. So we can solve each of them and find the correct answer. And that's what we do with two variable solutions. Hope that lesson's been helpful for you.